Good afternoon and welcome to the penultimate presentation in Dense Plyosonas Decoding uh, Digital uh, Dentistry Programme. My name is uh, Clive Schmullin, I'm a dentist in uh, Glasgow in the west of Scotland. Um, and over the next 45 minutes we're going to be looking at some ideas about how you can upgrade your practice through full arch immediate treatments. I'm going to introduce myself to you, we're going to do a kind of, kind of SWOT analysis and we're going to look at some communication, teamwork and treatment options available um, for you and your practice introducing full arch immediate treatments uh, for your patients. So a little bit, bit about me, this is uh, my family, my, my wife Kim, my sons L Lucas and Nathan and uh, daughter Miranda. Uh, some other things I love doing, uh, diving with my, my daughter and uh, um, running, I ran a marathon uh, last weekend. And important as dentistry is, I think it's, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that we need to make sure we've got a good work-life balance. We, we need to make sure that we get the benefits of the work and that we enjoy it and we don't lose sight of uh, other things uh, in life. My other families, I uh, work in many practices, but this is the team at uh, Grey Gables Dental in East Kilbride. Uh, my colleagues, uh, Michael Desi, uh, Ali Fraser, um, Michael Brown, and uh, Paul Fernie. And these are the kind of things I, I love doing. I teach uh, oral surgery, implants, and digital dentistry uh, to colleagues. And um, 18 months ago, at the start of uh, lockdown, um, I ran a series of uh, 40 webinars um, and we raised almost £40,000 for the Prince and Princess of Wales Hospice in Glasgow. And this was supported by um, many people and many donations and we got support from Dense Ply Serona. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dense Ply Serona for the sponsorship and support that they gave to me um, in running those webinars 18 months ago at the start of lockdown. So I work in uh, the west of Scotland uh, and I work in a, a number of dental practices. I think I work in seven or eight practices at the moment. Um, and as you can see, uh, many of the practices that I work in are, have digital dentistry. I'm very fortunate that they all have intraoral scanners. And I work with a number of different scanners, uh, Trios, um, Itero, Medit and Prime Scan. And that gives me the opportunity to see the, the advantages and disadvantages of all the different scanners that are on the market. Um, and they all have their strong points and they all have their weak points. But I believe that one scanner uh, stands out from the rest. Um, and I believe that the best scanner uh, that I am using today is, is Prime Scan. And it allows me to combine a great, you know, it's, intro scanning is great for me as a dentist. It's great for our patients and it's great for us uh, running businesses because dental practices, of course, are businesses. So um, I speak from time to time uh, for, for Dentist by Soon and, and they contacted me a few months ago and said, Clive, we'd like you to talk about full arch immediate treatments. And I thought, that's fine. I'm quite happy to talk to you about implants and digital planning and immediate loading and clinical stuff and show you lots of fantastic uh, surgical uh, slides and presentations. And they said, Michael Norton's doing that. We don't need you to do that, Clive. So what am I going to talk about? We want you to talk about the business of uh, introducing immediate treatments for patients. She said, I don't want to do that. There's, there's business people that can do that. I want to talk about clinical stuff. Now, Michael Norton's doing that, Clive. Uh, so you have to talk about the business. So I, I kind of like it was a bit like, this is me out with my comfort zone. Um, and I had to think, how can I talk about introducing and upgrading your practice through full arch immediate treatments? And one thing that struck me about the title is, notice it's full arch immediate treatments, not just implants. And that gave me the opportunity not just to talk about introducing implants into your practice, but digital dentures and other workflows uh, for your patients. 
And we were looking at the business side of, of implants and panicking, talking about money and, and not clinical stuff. So I had to go and think about how you would come up with a business plan to introduce immediate treatment options for uh, your patients in your practice. So some of you may be doing uh, immediate treatments already, immediate full arch treatments. Some of you might not be. So I wanted to have a sort of starting point. And as with any business plan, one way of developing a plan uh, for a business, any business, um, and in this case it's about to upgrade your practice through immediate treatments, is to do a SWOT analysis. And uh, I teach uh, an implant ear course, um, and uh, on that implant ear course, on day one, we get our uh, delegates to do a SWOT analysis for them introducing implants into their practices um, at a, an entry level. And I felt that that would be a good opportunity as a basis for this presentation to do a SWOT analysis uh, on myself as an example to you how you can plan to introduce immediate full arch in, uh, treatments to your patients. So on the implant year course on uh, day one, the delegates uh, do a SWOT analysis. Um, and as you can see, we're just flying through them here. They all come up with the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats that they see on the start of their implant learning and implant journey. So I felt that would be a useful basis on which to look at this presentation as you look at introducing full arch immediate treatments to your practice. So what are my strengths? Okay, now it's important to say that the strengths and weaknesses are probably issues that are internal to me as an individual dentist and to my individual, to the practices that I work in, whereas some of the opportunities and threats are external, they will be re as relevant to me as everybody watching today. So strengths and weaknesses are probably internal to me as a dentist and our practices. Uh, opportunities and threats are external and, and involve everybody. So what are, what are my strengths? And this was looking at me and, and perhaps the practices that I work in. So we see a lot of terminal dentition cases in, the, in Scotland, particularly the west of Scotland. Um, our, our diet and lifestyle is, means that we have a lot of people who have got failing denticians and this is a, a big part of the clinical work that that I do as an implant dentist, but also uh, colleagues working in health service practices have to manage terminal dentition cases as well. I see a lot of patients and I work in a group of practices, uh, seven or eight practices in all, and um, we see a lot of patients from within our, our own patient base, but most of the practices also have external ref uh, referrals from colleagues. So I have a strength and we see internal patients and external cases. As I've shown you, I'm very fortunate that the, the practices that I, I work in um, are all committed at one level or another to digital dentistry. I love teaching uh, on the implant course that I run. And as I said, I work in uh, independent and some corporate practices, so different environments as well. And that's, that's an advantage for me. So what are my weaknesses? I think that I'm quite honest, soft tissue surgery is probably my holy grail and continue to enhance and develop and, and learn these skills, but it's probably something that um, I, I want to be stronger at. As I think I alluded to earlier, I've probably not always got my work-life balance right, and that's something that I, I've, right at the start, I encourage you all to make sure you get your work-life balance right. Instagram and, and social media, I'm, I'm a wee bit like old school. I, mean, I, I remember in the olden days when uh, your advertising was all about the size of uh, your advert in the yellow pages um, and there was no such thing as the internet. I'm, I'm actually old enough to, to remember such times. Whereas now all my colleagues are posting stuff on Instagram. I, I'm probably a little bit behind the curve on some of that. And for me, whilst it's uh, in one way it's a strength that I work in different practices. Being a, a nomadic dentist can from time to time be rather challenging uh, to both myself uh, and the, the nurses who support me. So let's now look at um, some of the opportunities out there. 
So the demographics probably work in our favour, an ageing population holding on to their teeth longer and putting COVID down as an opportunity. How can COVID be an opportunity? Let's see. Digital dentistry is a huge opportunity, as I'm sure that you have seen over the course of the digital uh, decoding digital dentistry uh, presentations. Um, uh, you must embrace digital dentistry. Uh, you must learn the skills uh, of the future. So this is uh, a fairly extreme example of a, a failing dentition, a patient uh, who needed a clearance. And I routinely, every, every week, will see patients, perhaps not at this extreme, but people who have got uh, teeth that are failing and we need to manage that transition from being a dentate to uh, either fully dentulous or partially dentulous. So you can see here we've made uh, dentures and uh, as I said it's important to understand that full arch immediate treatments are not just about all on four immediate loads. Uh, dentures have not gone away and digital dentures have mean that we've now got um, ways at predictably making dentures uh, using digital workflows that didn't exist a few years ago. So as I said, the demographics, the, uh, uh, the increasingly elderly population holding on to their teeth longer, and whilst the overall rates of uh, edentate, uh, edentulism has declined over the decades, there are still a significant uh, percentage of the over 65s who are edentate. And that's not just in the United Kingdom or uh, in Scotland, uh, where I work. Um, uh, and I was over in, in the States at a conference and I was struck by the, the levels of edentulism in, in, in America. There's this, um, um, you know, you've got this kind of belief that in America, they've all got amazing smiles and they spend a fortune on their teeth. In fact, if you actually look at the, the demographics, um, both socio-economic and uh, cultural, the, the rates of edentulism in, in the US are, are strikingly high. Um, and we can see that uh, on this map. So on the west coast in uh, sunny California, white, uh, they've all got a very low incidence of dentism. But if you look in the, the southern states, um, where they're, they're darker blue on this map, there's a much, much higher incidence of edentulism. Now, it's quite funny, but if, if you look at that map of uh, where the highest areas of edentulism are in, in America, and then if we turn the clocks back four years ago and look at the same map uh, of the states that voted for Trump, uh, there's, there's a bit of a similarity there. So perhaps the way to winning the American election is to campaign uh, in the dental offices um, in, in swing states. And when I was in America, I was struck by the level of interest in digital dentures by all the companies that you can see uh, on, on the screen here. Um, it, it, was, it was really, I mean, I could never have believed if you said to me five or 10 years ago that I would be enthusiastic, passionate about not just implants, but digital dentures. I would never have believed you. And dentures were something that I, I found uh, was, it was, a, it was a weakness. Um, I would send denture cases to my uh, trainee dentist, to my younger colleagues, because I didn't want to do it. But the digital workflows have completely changed my approach. And of course, as I think Michael Norton alluded to earlier, the, the fundamentals, you, can, you can't ignore the, the principles of having teeth in the correct position, whether it's for um, immediate loading or denture cases, tooth setup and, and tooth positioning is as important to understand in the, both the analog world as it is in the digital world. But the digital techniques that we have make delivering um, digital dentures possible now. So there's a, there's a growth, not just in, in, in interest in, in dentures, but obviously in implants. 
and we've seen that over the past few years. Because who would have thought 18 months ago when I was doing those uh, fundraising webinars that um, COVID would have been an opportunity for dentistry? We were all anxious because our practices were closed. We couldn't see our patients. And then when we could see our patients, we were told that we would have to wear all this extra PPE and all these masks and that we wouldn't follow time and all these things. And so how could we go from that to a situation where it became an opportunity? But what happened at the same time is people weren't able to go on holiday. Our patients weren't spending their money uh, flying off to far-flung places. They weren't going on cruises. And we started to see quite quickly as we returned to work, people who perhaps had chosen to defer dental treatment coming to see us. And this was very evident for me um, in this demographic um, of you know, middle-aged and beyond people, uh, patients who had failing terminal dentitions. And we got busier and busier and busier. Um, so COVID, bizarrely, has become uh, an opportunity uh, in, for us as, as, as dentists. Um, and this isn't just something that I'm saying anecdotally. We see this report in, in dentistry. Um, about, it's a report from uh, Christie's & Co. Uh, showing that um, a third of practice owners have a higher revenue now than before COVID-19. So what are the threats? What are the threats? Again, threats not just to me, but these are external uh, and will affect all of you. Competition. Um, do you want to miss out? Are you, th are you sitting at home thinking, I can't really do this work, uh, but I don't want to miss out on this opportunity to deliver um, immediate full arch treatments to our patients? Is this kind of treatment pushing you out of your comfort zone? That could be a good thing, but you need to make sure that you learn the skills um, about digital dentistry, about full arch uh, treatment planning, as discussed by Michael Norton uh, earlier today. And a threat, I think, that has happened uh, in dental practices um, as a result of COVID uh, uh, is that it's challenging to recruit uh, staff, it's challenging to recruit dental associates, it's challenging to recruit uh, dental nurses. I believe that if you are a forward-thinking practice and you provide digital dentistry um, and advanced treatments for your patients, it also motivates your staff and can attract staff to your practice. So these uh, treatments and this technology will help you to recruit and retain the right staff in your practices. So what is the competition? And there's me in my hot tub. Because as well as, um, as, well as dentistry having you know, increased in over the past 18 months, sales of hot tubs in the UK have rocketed as well. I bought a hot tub. As people couldn't go on holiday, they invested in hot tubs. And uh, don't get me wrong, I, I, love, I love my hot tub. Um, but I, I'm not having to choose between a hot tub and having all my teeth uh, removed. Um, good luck trying to get a builder, a kitchen designer, or a landscape gardener at the moment. These guys are all rammed. So people are spending money at the moment. Um, and we've got to, you know, people make choices as to whether they spend that on hot tubs, uh, builders, kitchen, bathroom design, etc. Et or full arch immediate treatments. Dental tourism is, uh, is nothing new. Our, our, you know, we see adverts in, in newspapers fly off to wherever you want in the world and have dental implants and cosmetic treatment done at a fraction of the cost that we can deliver it in the UK. But at the moment, it's more challenging uh, to, for patients to travel abroad. And that's probably another reason why we've seen an increasing number of people having treatment at home. And we've got to make sure that when people start flying again, we can communicate to patients why they should continue to come 
and have the treatment in the, in the UK uh, and not fly off to somewhere and have it done very cheaply. And of course, we live in a, in a very competitive world. Um, you know, you only have to look on Google, as we'll show you. Um, everybody is trying to get the, the same work. Everybody is on Instagram and social media chasing after uh, Invisalign and um, full arch treatments. So there is a lot of competition out there. So let, let's look at dental tourism. So people aren't flying away at the moment because uh, of PCR tests and all the, the barriers that COVID have put up to international travel. But we need to communicate to patients who come in and say, well, why should I pay you 15 or 20,000 pounds for treatment when I can go to Turkey and have it done for four or 5,000 pounds? And I can show patients, um, such as if you look at the, the OPT, um, patient came in complaining that they had uh, a numb lip and couldn't feel anything in their lower jaw. Well, it, you don't have to be a genius to realize what has uh, gone wrong here. The patient had uh, implants done, which had four implants in the maxilla and one placed in the, in the mandible. And um, that implant is through the inferior dental nerve. And the, the patient thought that I was just going to miraculously be able to fix it. Now, her problem started in Turkey. And um, whilst I suggested that I could take the implant out, that was unlikely to fix it. And she should go back to Turkey um, to uh, go back to Turkey to get that treatment resolved. Um, I've got quite a number of patients uh, who have had treatment abroad and sometimes you have to deal with these problems and we can show this to other people as a reason why you maybe not want to jump on a plane and go abroad. We could have a lecture on screw and cement retained restorations. Um, but look at this case. Look here. We've got both screw retained and cement retained uh, restorations at the same time and I think there's a little bit too much cement there. And this is a patient that had treatment in, I can't remember if it was India or Pakistan, um, but it ended up to meet, to, to deal with the problem that was created many, many thousands of miles away. A lovely patient who I'm going to uh, show you a wee video of shortly had implants placed in uh, Bulgaria, some rather uh, interesting one-piece implants and came in with failed temporary bridges um, and I had to manage and restore these because she'd lost confidence in the uh, dentist abroad. So let's, uh, let, this is how we restored them, but let's, uh, let's hear from a patient, Helen, um, who had experience of uh, dental treatment in, Sof in Sofia in Bulgaria. So here's Helen. Uh, looking back on it now, how did you find the cost of an implant treatment abroad? For me, because of the complications, um, it was just costing more and more money to the point I thought there's, there's going to come a time I would be able to afford to go back to get these fixed. So when I went to yourself and got the, the price, yeah, it was more expensive, yes it was, but real, in real terms it wasn't, it was just a false economy. So within four months the temporary bridge snapped and it cracked over. So it was, um, I couldn't even that side, it was just. There was some language difficulties, not with the person that took the money. The uh, bridge came loose at the front, right. and started to loosen at the front. Uh, again, a, a telephone. This time I don't think there was, is it accommodating this the second time? They suggested that I uh, pay for the taxi from the airport, and they took the loose implant out, gave me another implant, and repaired the bridge. Right. So I had to go for another week okay. for that, although I think it took three days. Okay, so you have more flights, more costs. More flights, more accommodation, more spending money, time off my work, right. which is like a week's wage you should lose it at the time you were jumped over. I, I was really scared to go back at this time because I'm thinking, oh God, here we go again. And I'm, I'm nowhere near getting the finished products at this time. That's true. Sure. I was running out of money as well, so. If you do this, would you recommend to one of your friends with a blood for treatment or what would you suggest? I would suggest no, I would suggest going to Scottish Dentists. Try to try get some Scotland. Good. Put yourself, put your yeah. right to the dentist that's going to give you a fair price, fair idea of what you can do with it, and a true reflection of the complications that might arise. That was never explained to me. So there you go. Um, 
directly from a patient who has had treatment abroad and we, we use that video when we're communicating to other patients who are interested in having treatment abroad. And this is a, a Instagram a post from a practice that I, I work in that does a lot of uh, Botox, why you shouldn't have 10 pound Botox in, in Turkey. I should just point out, going back to Helen in the video, she was very keen on seeing uh, that you, you had your treatment by a dentist in Scotland. I should point out that there are other, other good dentists in other parts of the United Kingdom. So, we've got competition abroad and there's competition at home. Um, you know, if you go into Google Ads, where it's a very competitive world, and um, there's many dentists on the high street very often offering the same thing. So how do you communicate to your patient um, why should they come to see you? And you don't want to miss out on this. You don't want to be the dentist that isn't providing this treatment. You need to offer full arch immediate treatments for your patients. I think it's really, really important that you can deliver that. So let's just spend a little bit of time now looking at some ideas about how you can uh, introduce these kind of treatments in, in your practice. You need to learn the skills and uh, we saw earlier on today the clinical side of Im um, immediate uh, implant treatments. You need to be able to communicate these to your patient. You need to explain these treatments. It's not just about you, it's about your team. And there's a wide range of treatment options that you need to be able to talk to your patients about. So again, uh, we saw this in the presentation earlier today, fairly um, standard, you know, we've got five Astra EV implants and multi-base uh, and a, an immediate loaded acrylic bridge. This is the kind of work that we've been increasingly doing more and more and more of this um, over not just the past uh, 18 months, but I would say over the past you know, three to five years, this is an increasing part of our workload. So how do you talk to your patients about this? I said earlier that social media and Instagram wasn't my thing, but yes, you have to use it. You need to have testimonials, you need to have content on your website, you need to have social media content. Let's not have clinical pictures, no blood. Ah, you know, we all like to see um, pictures of alveoplasty and that's great at um, you know, events like this, but it's not maybe not right for our patients. Use your cases. Don't just use stock images from Adobe Stock or iStock Photos. Show the work that you can do before and afters. Keep the videos uh, short, um, 30 to 60 seconds, and make sure they're done professionally, no shaky cameras. All this communication stuff, you know, we could spend an entire day um, talking about this and that there are there are experts in social media and marketing that are uh, far more knowledgeable about it than I am. But I wanted to show you how I talk to patients and encourage them to get uh, advanced treatments uh, that we're looking at today. So, you know, this image from Adobe Stock, you know, yes, it shows what all on four is. But why not use the pictures from cases that you've done um, or that if you refer to somebody else to begin with, some of the work that you've done with your colleagues. Don't just rely on, on, on stock images. You know, this is a, this is a um, social media post from a practice that I work in. Um, you know, we've paid somebody to do this and it's just stock images. And it, what does it say? It's not that great. So again, before and afters, um, no blood, no surgical stuff, just a nice where we were to begin with and where we get to at the end. Show the kind of stuff that you uh, can deliver for your patients. I can see a question on the, on the screen there, what do you do in terms of marketing for full arch patients? I think I'm going to address that over the next uh, five minutes or so. So videos, again, Get, you know, get your patients, just ask your patients to do a wee testimonial either in writing or a video testimonial if they've been happy with the treatment. Get a video so you can communicate uh, via them to other patients. I would actually go to the point of saying I was probably close to depression because your face is the first thing that people see 
And if you can't smile with confidence at them, if you can't talk with confidence and you can't even eat with them, you do lose confidence. And I was starting to get where I would put off going out with friends and put off doing this in case I had to talk to somebody or whatever. And now I'm like, oh, and I've got a three week period. It has been amazing. Every time you see me, any pictures that were taken, even in the house, I'm walking about smiling at myself. Because so, video testimonials, really, really important. Um, yes, you need to use social media. Um, I, I am, I'm not an Instagram genius, I said I work in a practice uh, where they're absolutely amazing with social media, they're really creative and imaginative with it. And one of my colleagues there is he's just, he's just so clever, some of the stuff he does, not just on Instagram, but TikTok. I mean, what is TikTok? I, I just, I don't get it, but apparently everybody loves it. Um, so again, social media, you have to learn how to use it um, to communicate to your patients what you're doing. Testimonials. We saw video testimonials, but here's a testimonial from uh, one of my patients. So Clive, if you were straight, I would marry you. Love, David. So, you know, share your testimonials, okay, particularly ones that stand out, you know, let your patients know uh, and, you know, talk, you know, show off things like this. Um, many of us will have had um, bottles of wine or chocolates or flowers from grateful patients. In, in the west of Scotland, uh, this, is, this is a present that I got from a patient uh, about a month ago. I got a fish supper. Um, and a can of iron brew from one of my patients and it was absolutely delicious and you know you might wonder why we've got uh, terminal dentitions uh, in, in Scotland well it's because we're all drinking too much iron brew you notice at least I'm drinking sugar-free uh, iron brew so share your testimonials get your Google reviews and post them this is a, a review that we received recently from a surgical case in one of the practices um, you know you need to, to bang the drama and, and get your Google reviews out and work on that. Again, search engine optimization, website ra um, ranking, bank links, keywords, all this kind of clever stuff. There are creative experts that, you know, can help with this. Um, but, you know, you need to understand how to make sure that your website communicates that you are able to do these treatments. But all this stuff is social media, video testimonials, um, Instagram, it's all very clever. But let's not forget the most important source of referrals, I think, to not just our practice, but many of our practices. And that's good old fashioned word of mouth. You've looked after and cared for a patient and um, you, that word of mouth is the best way of growing your practice. So you, you put all this time and effort into social media, getting recommendations, referrals, etc. You need to make sure that when people contact you by phone or come in to see you, that the team at the desk are knowledgeable about these complicated treatment options. So if you've got a call handling company or if your phone's engaged and it goes to some call handling company, you need to make sure that these calls are quickly followed up. You don't want to lose the leads if you've been spending money on Google Ads and search engine optimization. You need to make sure that the people who are interested, we answer their queries in a knowledgeable and sensible way. So you have to make sure that your t you know, people answering the calls, you train them and that they understand the treatments that you're wanting to deliver. Do you offer finance for your treatment? You know, these can be very, very expensive treatments. So I'm sure many of our practices um, will offer uh, finance or interest free or with interest. But do your team understand? Are they comfortable talking about large sums of money? Do you follow up on your leads? How do you do that? You use a spreadsheet or software. So you need to have systems in place to follow up on inquiries as they come into the practice. And you can send your patients videos and information about all the treatment options that you have. 
you can you know send them information about uh, implants and other treatments so follow these up quickly and it becomes very obvious at this point that it's about teamwork in your practice it's not just about me as a dentist knowing about um, immediate treatment options the entire team needs to understand them so they can communicate uh, when the patient's shown interest and when we're talking to our patients and we, we follow them on that journey from an initial inquiry through to uh, having whatever treatment they choose to have with you. So uh, we could have a debate about the role of uh, treatment coordinators, patient care coordinators. I don't like to see them as being salespeople. Um, I, we, we have an implant coordinator and we involve her at the treatment planning stage so there's somebody, there's a nurse there who's involved with me as a dentist at the consultation and the patient so I don't like the idea where patients go off and see a uh, treatment coordinator before the dentist I know that that works for some people but I think the implant consultation is the most important part of the patient journey and I like to do that directly with the patient, but involve my patient uh, coordinator as well. You know, many of the treatments that we have are very complicated clinically, complicated social and medical uh, backgrounds to our patients. And that isn't something that can be treatment planned or chatted about with a, a, a treatment coordinator. And I know that might, you know, some people have got different views on that, but for me, I like to spend time with the patient going over this, the treatment options available for them. And it's about a team. You need to have a dental technician. You need to have somebody that if you need support with sedation and you need to make sure that you've got maintenance in place. Uh, the hygienist, everybody's on board in delivering these treatments in your practice. It's all about teamwork. A hygienist, as I said, you need to make sure that these patients maintain uh, fixed restorations. It's a lifetime commitment. So that implant consultation, I have a system where I have a little computer thing on my website and we use red, amber and green treatment planning. Very easy for me to understand and very easy for patients to understand. So red teeth need to come out. Amber teeth have got a prognosis of less than five years and green teeth have got a prognosis of over five years. And we use this to communicate to our patients who are, have got terminal failing dentitions about why we need to plan the treatments that we're doing. And this is a way of very, very simply communicating that to them. So that's available uh, on my website. But it's not always about full arch implants. This patient went to see another practice and was told that they needed um, upper and lower all on fours and the bill was going to be whatever the bill was going to be. I, had a, I felt that there were teeth that, that should be kept and there were amber teeth that had a, a prognosis um, of certainly five years and I decided to go for a, you know, a combination of implant crowns and fixed uh, uh, bridge work. Um, so, you know, it's not about selling full arch implant or treatments where patients have got teeth that we can keep. It's not about just selling, selling, selling. It's about making sure we get the right treatment uh, for our patients. And at that implant consultation, that's where we take the time to talk to our patients about the options that they have for them. So, at last I get to uh, talk a wee bit about some clinical cases. Um, I think I said at the start that uh, I was slightly anxious about uh, not being able to talk about clinical stuff, but we have to tie it all together because of course we are um, providing treatments for our patients and we need to make sure that we understand that. And Dent Supply have got a, a range of uh, options and, and ways that we can help to deliver um, full arch immediate treatment for our patients. We saw earlier in Michael Norton's presentation 
fix solutions, Atlantis bridges, Atlantis hybrid bridges, uh, and now the, the bridge-based concept, which is due to be launched. And uh, we, we see in this case a full arch uh, Atlantis bridge framework. Removable solutions, not everybody is suitable for fixed teeth. Um, they, they may be, may, removable solutions may be more appropriate. So we need to understand all these treatment options and we need to communicate all these treatment options to our patients at that implant consultation. Let's not forget about uh, the CONUS concept, a treatment I've uh, used for many years with uh, ankylos, um, but of course it's available um, for uh, other implants, um, the Atlantis CONUS concept. And for, for me, the, the advantage of, of CONUS is you've got the benefits of uh, both a fixed bridge uh, and the advantages of a removable overdenture um, so these are treatments uh, that we, we don't use all the time, but they are an option that from time to time we, we look at. So again, we've got this as a treatment option, we can communicate that to a patient. And you can see here uh, a syncone case that I've done relatively recently. And this is a, 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 a conus uh, case on Atlantis. And you can see how well retained that overdenture is and then it clicks back in. So it's about communicating to the patients the wide range of treatment options that we've got. At the start, I alluded, I alluded to my interest in digital dentures. And uh, you can't deliver full arch immediate treatments without, you know, dentures as being one of those. N not every patient is suitable for implants. It may be financial, um, it may be a, a clinical dental reason, or there may be some medical reason why we cannot use um, implants. And digital dentures and the workflows that are now available have transformed uh, my, my interest uh, in digital dentures. I, for the past four years, all the, both the media and uh, replacement dentures that I've made, they're all done using digital workflows and I could spend uh, an entire day talking about digital dentures but just briefly you can see here with the InLab 20 software there's a digital workflow within that software package. You can see in this immediate case um, clearance um, a failing dentition and we've delivered a very very effective uh, full immediate uh, denture using digital dentures so uh, it's really quite exciting um, some of the options that we now have uh, as I said it's not all about all on four it's not all about implants it's about treatments the right treatments for a patient and making sure that we offer everything to our patients and from time to time uh, we need to think about dentures as well So, of course, earlier on, Michael Norton talked about uh, Simplant um, and again, Densplastrona have got great software and they've got great implants and abutments, the smart fix abutment. We know that workflow and we saw that earlier on today um, and that this is how we pred predictably deliver immediate loading for our patients using both um, uh, Astra uh, and, and ankylos implants. So we can't, you know, this was all really covered by Michael earlier on. And you can see a clinical, a clinical case there, up and lower, um, immediate load case um, on um, Astra EV implants with multibase. And another case you can see um, six Astra EV implants, immediate load. And uh, now, Michael again covered this earlier on, but we, we you know, and I've spoken about the advantages of prime scan. Um, there's a big discussion about um, intraoral scanning with prime scan for full arch implants versus Impergum. Um, I think we are now at the point with prime scan where we can deliver this uh, predictably with patients. And we've done this on quite a number of patients, uh, scanning um, and having frameworks made 
uh, and fitted using a completely digital workflow. And I know that PrimeScan has been validated uh, for such use. Um, and you can see it at Atlantis Bridge here. And just to prove the point, another case, uh, all on four in the mandible. We've got four implants um, and we've used the prime scan to scan them. So digital dentistry is part of the way that we deliver um, full arch immediate treatments for our patients. So digital dentistry is here now. You need to embrace it. This, uh, the past two days of presentations have all been about decoding digital dentistry and I would encourage you to uh, you know, use these technologies in, in your practice. Um, I, I think Dentsply is, is a great company to work with. Um, they, I, I think they've got the best intraoral scanner on the market. They've got a joined up approach to digital dentistry. I think they're the best dental company out there. Uh, and it's great working with them and the, uh, the products that we've got. So, um, in summary, please do not miss out on uh, full arch immediate treatments for your patients. Digital dentistry, the future is now. Embrace it. Uh, and I hope this has given you some insight into how you can upgrade your practice with full arch immediate treatments. So, thank you for listening. Thank you, Clive. That was an amazing presentation. Um, Thank you. I think it's clear to everyone um, that's in the dental world and everyone else watching as well that you don't only have to be a dentist now, you have to be a business person and a marketeer at the same time. How do you balance all of that and find out what your priority is? Um, I think that's a, a very good question. As I think I honestly said at the start, the, the, the I'd be more comfortable talking about the clinical side of it, but you can't escape from the fact that as dentists, we are, you know, we're small business people. Yeah. We run small businesses. We work in a, in a, as I said in my presentation, in a competitive environment where we're competing with hot tubs or other dental practices. So you need to learn mm. about marketing. You need to learn about the business side of uh, dentistry. Um, and you know you, you you know you need to reach out and work with colleagues and and, and the companies that support you um, to ensure that if you've got the clinical skills, if you've got the knowledge, that's all very well. But you need to make sure that you've got the patience so that you can deliver your skills and knowledge. Yeah, no, I love that. That it's a it's a collaborative approach. It's not just you as a standalone. You can bring other people in. And I think this is the point that I was making, yeah. is that it's a, a team effort. It's yeah. not just about how talented I may be, what skills I know. We've got to make sure that everybody in the practice understands that. So it's about a team mm. and it's about working with dental labs that can support you. It's about working with implant companies such as Dentsply Serona yeah. that can uh, support you as well. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Um, do you think the advent of digital technology has helped in terms of promotion of getting new patients into the practice as well then? Oh, absolutely. Um, digital dentistry sells itself. Um, you know, when you uh, scan a patient and they see the images mm. coming up there, um, it's still relatively innovative. You know, I might work in practice that I've got it, but many patients are the first time they've seen it and they're blown away. Yeah. Um, and it's, there's no better way to communicate than bringing a scan up and then having a CT scan and showing them mm. the jawbone. You know, they might have been used to going to a dentist and holding up a little x-ray to the light. <laughs> um, and now you can show the, the, the bone in detail. Mm. You can show pictures of the jaw. Of course, digital dentistry serves itself. And, you know, I, I think of CEREC as well. Mm. You know, p patients see their tooth being made in front of them. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, then they take pictures of that and they share it on social media. So digital dentistry helps 
to market itself and market your practice for you, it helps it grow. Yeah, it creates that emotional vibe, doesn't it? Whereas dentistry was a little bit but, removed from the patient, even though it was yeah, happening to them. Yeah, uh, digital dentistry, the patients just, they engage with it, they become interested in it. Yeah. They, they see things um, in a way that you couldn't in the past. You know, if you have a, if you have a study model there, it's, eh, it's a bit dull. But if you've got a 3D image that you're rotating around and you're showing them, uh, the treatment that you're planning, if you're using Simplan as um, you know Michael mm. was showing earlier on, um, and you can show them where you planned the implant, yes, it might take several hours. There's a lot of non-clinical time involved in that. Yeah. But that is what helps to you know gain the patient's trust. Yeah. And that's why they're going to come to you and not perhaps somebody else. That's why they're going to in invest in your practice and not fly off to um, Turkey or Budapest or wherever. Yeah, no, absolutely. And on the subject of that guided surgery option, obviously you, you've utilised that an awful lot within your cases. Do you find that promoting that to your clients and then having to charge extra for that on the top of it, or does it all encompass? Not, not at all. I mean, we charge, uh, off, you know, it depends on, on, on the case, whether you, but we charge a fee for the scan and for a guide. If you're taking time, if you're taking time to plan a case digitally, to print a guide, to mill a guide, then of course you need to be you need to be paid for that. Now, it, of course, it saves time clinically, um, but you know the, the time that you take, you, you need to get paid for it. But yeah. patients understand that. Yeah, they, they they see that you've invested in technology. Um, and I've never found a problem with patients, yeah. um, you know, with that. Because they're probably, you're, you're showing them the work as it's happening. They're seeing the, the input that you're having on it. It's it, not it, just at, overnight. It, so if I, you know, if I've done a, a, a CT scan and an intro scan um, and I'm an implant consultation with the patient and I'm spending a lot of time talking and communicating to a patient, yes, it's helping to get them to go ahead with the treatment. But they, they appreciate the time that you're taking with them. I think this is what perhaps makes this approach stand out from the, the kind of the, the sales implant mm. coordinator, treatment coordinator, where, where they, they, they see somebody first. Now again, if that works, fine. Mm. I'm, I'm not knocking it if that works in your practice. But uh, I, I think, you know, communicating to the patient using CT, all the images, all the digital stuff, uh, it works. Yeah, and I, I quite like what you said there. It's like, if it works for you, then continue that situation. But if not, there's other options if out there. If you have got, um, you know, if you've got a, a, a treatment coordinator that, um, and, a, and a system of, of, of patients seeing a treatment coordinator before they see you, if that works for you, and that's, listen, that's great. It's just not something that has worked for me, yeah. I've got a different role for an implant coordinator who's absolutely involved with the patient, um, but in conjunction with me. Yeah, no, completely agree. And I liked what you said about social media and using stock images, um, and then that didn't work for you on the social media side. So utilising your own images, and do you do a lot of your own photography? Do you bring someone in to do that? I, I, I do all my own clinical photography. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I just got a good SLR camera, digital SLR camera. But you know, you can get great photographs mm. with an iPhone. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't have to invest £2,000 in a SLR camera with a ring flash. You can get fantastic photos uh, with an iPhone mm. if you have the settings correct. Um, there's special lights that you can attach onto your iPhone. Yeah. Um, and some of the images that were in my presentation were just simply taken with an iPhone. Oh, amazing. You would never tell though, because like you say, you've taken the time to just do a bit of research without just get your get your iPhone in the right settings. Mm. And I, I'm, I'm not a salesman for uh, Apple <laughs> or iPhones, but I understand the latest iPhone has got an even better camera yeah. on it. So you can be really creative with just an iPhone. In fact, there, there's, there's books on using your iPhone and uh, other uh, smartphones are available um, <laughs> to That's the BBC take, bit. <laughs> yeah, other, other smartphones are available to take digital photographs. Yeah. So uh, whether it's an iPhone or digital, you can do it yourself. 
it, it, you know, you, you can use an iPhone uh, if, to, to create videos if you've got the right lighting. Mm. Um, or whereas some people want to bring in a professional company to do their video testimonials. No. These, uh, the, 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 the video testimonials that I showed uh, today, um, I just used it, recorded them with an iPhone and edited them with iMovies. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, some of them could be a little bit sharper, or you bring in a company, whatever works for you. No, amazing. And if you're putting them on social media, like you say, it's, uh, it's everyone has that perception now that they see that it's been done on an iPhone and it's kind of the expected content that they'll have. Yeah, and I think one of the things about um, lockdown has been that they're quite used to Zoom uh, video calls. Yeah. Um, webinars, etc., where the technology isn't always completely perfect, um, and I'm not saying you want to have like shaky images. So get a little thirty-pound uh, iPhone stand, yeah. um, and uh, you know use that as a starting point. Uh, and then, by all means, you could get some a professional company to come in and do a practice uh, video. Um, and do some, you know, more high-end video testimonials as well. Yeah, no, amazing. Um, and, and final question then. So, when you're posting your your images, are you getting patient compliance? Obviously, to absolutely. Be able to get that? So, any images uh, that you have of treatment, uh, you need to get uh, patient's consent for. And there's different consent that you can have. You can have consent uh, to use the images um, in a dental, you know. Uh, Ma sort of scientific publication um, and that needs to be different from the consent that you would have for using on social media and the uh, same applies for video as well so you must have patient consent to use any images. Oh, amazing, thank you. Um, it's been a fantastic session. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I'm sure the audience have as well so thank you for thank coming you. down and seeing us today. Not at all. Awesome, thank you. Thank you very much.